Hello, welcome to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be my, I guess, like a review um, discussion video of Lord of Illusions. This is the Clive Barker film, of course. Um, now, the reason why I'm doing this is, like, it's on Netflix. And I caught it again, and I thought to myself, Let, let's let's see if I like it as much as I did when I first saw it. Let's, let's have a look at it with a, I don't know, like maybe a less jaded view. Because I really liked it when I first... Um, viewed it. And I tell you what, I still had a good time with it. Bear in mind this is all going to be spoilers. FYI, for a very old film. Um, so I had a really good time with it. And um, it's an interesting one. You can hear me typing there. Um, it's an interesting one. Because there's some really like, reasonably good actors in it. Um, you've got uh, Scott Bakula, who plays Harry Damore. You've got uh, Kevin J. O'Connor. So, uh, Kevin O'Connor, who played Philip Swan. Um, you have Famke Jansen, who now we know, I guess, mainly became famous with the, uh, what was it, the X-Men movies. She played, um, you know, the Dark Phoenix and things like that. So, I had a good time with it, but I, I chose these images here. Because what this film indicated to me is that Clive Barker was seemingly on a bit of a decline at this point. And I hate to say it as well, but this film is is very much... Go back and watch it, for starters. Go back and watch it and see if you agree with me. But good God, is it, it's such a, a Hollywood film. Like, it really is. He tried to inject some of his... You know, his tone into it, but it goddamn did it fail. It really failed. And it's Hollywood for a, for a number of reasons. The Him as a director, because he, he directed this, and he did the screenplay. And obviously Hellraiser was his first movie. And I think that there was something special in that. Being his first, and him being an amateur. I think there was something very unique in that. Very special. Very, very original. Uh, in his directing style, how he set up the cameras. Just everything. You know, but then this film comes along, and I'm like, just technical perspective right now. Anything else is all you know. We'll, we'll get to in a second. But even just the technical perspective, he does like focus in and outs. You know, uh, sweeping pan shots, just stuff that polishes it too much outside of what he had uh, entered into the Hollywood fray with, which was Hellraiser. And I just think, goddamn, what a shame. What a shame. Now, if you don't know what this is, it follows Harry Damore, uh, who we've now just recently had in uh, the Hellraiser series I've been running here on the channel, which I've been doing, the Boom Comics. Uh, if you've missed it, I'll leave it linked down below. Um, so we follow him. He's hired to investigate someone else, but then he gets wrapped up into this nightmarish world of Nyx versus Swan. Now, Nyx, from what I can tell, is essentially a man who has learnt the dark arts tried to become a god and then decided not to basically uh, and and he has like a, a Manson cult and all this kind of stuff but he's the real deal right and that's what we open with this cult like thing and uh, and then you can see it on the image above uh, the one where he's hanging from this kind of flesh altar in the uh, in the rafters there and there's a, there's a lot of substance, but no actual... Well, there's a lot of style, no substance. I'm trying to think of the right phrase. But this is unexplained. Like, he's just hanging there. It's this big flowing thing. There's no reason for it. It's just there. And I'm not one of these people that wants everything explained either. But there was a lot of that in this film. Um, anyway, so it opens up with this. And, and Swan versus Nyx. Kills him. Puts him to the grave. And then we flash forward. I think it was... 15 years or 12 years. The Harry Damore getting wrapped up into this stuff. Uh, Butterfield is in this. Who, again, if you don't know, he was in this Hellraiser comic thing uh, that I sort of, you know, narrated here on the channel. And, um, and, and I can't help but think that there is some form of sort of self-insertion into this series from Clive Barker into this movie. Um, I really do feel like Clive Barker saw himself as Nick's genuinely 
Um, now, it's, it's, it's no uh, surprise to anyone. It's no uh, illusion <laughs> to anyone. Um, that Clive Barker's a gay man. Um, partakes in, you know, all of this kind of stuff. Like, it's documented if you know anything about Clive Barker. He is a fan of BDSM. Um, and how he set up this film, I genuinely can't help but think this was a love letter about himself and what he wants to be. You know, he's got all these acolytes and he's talking about the flesh and you are not worthy and blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I genuinely got that impression. Um, and again, bear in mind, I still enjoyed it. But I want to take a look at this from a, a different, more critical eye. So, Harry de Moore gets wrapped up in this thing and it all culminates in Nick's getting resurrected. And um, there's, some, there's some janky ass practical effects in this. And I just, again, I think back to what they did with Hellraiser and what they managed to succeed with, and it was just so fantastic. So, so good. And there are some callbacks to Hellraiser. Um, I was looking for Easter eggs, and I couldn't really find too many, in fairness. But the recurring commentary of flesh um, is a big thing for Clive Barker. He loves to talk about flesh. He's a very carnal guy. You know, in all of his stories, flesh this, flesh that. Um, and, again, there was this kind of interesting sort of theme running through this, a quote running through this film, which was, um, flesh is a trap, magic sets you free. And again, if I compare this to me thinking that this is Clive Barker, um, sort of self-inserting himself into these stories, uh, again, this is an, nothing new to anyone, uh, maybe to some people, but his health has been incredibly bad for a long, long time. Um, and I can't help but think, again, it's just about him. It's sort of a, a tale of himself. But anyway, I also wanted to run through some of the the aesthetics running through this. Obviously, we, we look at the top, we look at the bottom. Um, and, and again, a lot of aesthetics that are shared running through other things. You know, we have uh, Baphomet here. Um, it, it's very... Look at it. Obviously, it's over my head now. But you can see it's all... There's a lot of similarities running through here. Sort of twisted versions of the Jesus Christ pose and all these things. Um, but goddamn, is it is it a far cry from Hellraiser? Now I did enjoy this. The acting is, eh, you know, eh, it's fine. I mean, it was it's a '90s movie. You sort of forgive them a little bit. It's a bit of a schlock fest. Um, and the, I didn't really like the Butterfield uh, sort of characterization. He's he's basically like a a murder twink, I guess you could say. He's this sort of uh, effeminate boyish man that goes on a tirade because he loves Nyx and Nyx is his, basically his god. Um, so anyway, I just, yeah, I thought I'd take a look at this movie again and it was a, it was a the wild ride and it's got real bad pacing actually and the one really good practical effect that I absolutely loved was that final shot of Nyx, his whole skull opening up and this new weird demonic creature coming through. That was great. And they barely had it in the film. What a shame. What a shame. Oh dear. Um, but anyway, I, I enjoyed this film. I thought it was decent. I really like the depiction of Nyx as he comes back from the grave. And he's had that metal face gauntlet thing on his head for so long that it's actually left indentations in his uh, flesh. That was good. That's a good way to do... Uh, sort of a demonic looking man because obviously he is just a man sort of but not uh, so you expect him to not look you know hugely demonic but this is a way to have him come back and look very very uh, sinister and I thought that was pretty pretty damn decent so anyway if you've watched this please do let me know it's a good it's an alright 90s flick it's not scary it's a bad Clive Barker movie, you know. He really, he really went Hollywood in this, and it was a shame. It was a real shame because it could have been. I think this could have been really good if they'd spent longer exploring the narrative of Nix and that sort of cult-like behaviour. I think that would have been a bit better. Um, Harry Demore is a fantastic character, but they didn't flesh him out enough. So it's lacking in parts, a lot of style over actual substance. 
Uh, whereas I think if you compare it to Hellraiser, I think you'll see stark contrast. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Just a bit of a chilled video here on New Year's Eve. I'm recording this on New Year's Eve, FYI, if you're watching this in the future. Uh, but let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I've missed age. Take care.